This is Smiles TV. Welcome to Smiles TV. I'm Stephanie Anthony Miles, and you're watching the best community affairs broadcast in the country. I'm sitting here with Mike Ray Anderson, and he's an actor, author, and an award-winning filmmaker. He's done things that are magnificent, and you don't want to miss this broadcast. Remember, Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. He was crucified and buried, and he rose on the third day. Confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised them from the dead and thou shalt be saved. Stay tuned for more smiles. Welcome back to Smiles. I'm sitting here with Michael Ray Anderson. Thank you for taking time to talk with me. Thank you. Thank you for having me so much. You know what? I've read a lot about you and I've seen a lot and I, our audience needs to know your background and, and tell them a little bit about being a polished soul first of all. Oh, well, what a polished soul means is that every diamond in the rough is a soul that deserves to be polished. Mm -hmm. so, you know, as, as us coming through adversities, we have a tendency to take it the rough, abrasive way. Mm -hmm. But we don't realize that it is all those pressures, whether it be at home environmental pressures, societal pressures, or just economical pressures. When you come through that pressure, you become that polished soul, and it has a lot to do with my life. I mean, you know, I came up in a domestic violence plagued household. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my father would beat my mom every day, and he held us at gunpoint, and, you know, just kind of like, I'm like, yo, if as a kid, I can't even feel safe at home, where am I going to feel safe at? Right, and, and you're from Fayette, Fayetteville, um, North, Carolina. North Carolina. Yes, Fayetteville, North Carolina. And um, from um, what I've seen so far, um, you ended up um, in some gang activity early in life. Yeah. Well, when I was 14, I actually just started selling marijuana in school, then graduated uh, messing around with the local kingpins and start selling crack and, you know, and then started selling guns and stuff like that. So by the time I was age uh, 19, I ended up in the Cumberland County Jail facing the death penalty plus life plus 60 years. Wow. Yeah, I was facing first degree murder, second degree murder, attempt murder, two shooting to occupied dwellings. I was one of the craziest cases out there because I got out on one murder charge, mm -hmm. got out on bond, and then when I was out in the streets and some crazy altercation happened and it turned into a shootout, I ended up shooting two guys. Now the first one I didn't, I didn't do, it was a case that I sold the gun, mm -hmm. but I wasn't running my mouth or snitching mm -hmm. or nothing like that, so I was wearing that case as well. But the second one was while I was out on bond for the one that I didn't do, and like I said, that fight had transitioned into a shootout. And then I ended up protecting my best friend's life and my life by shooting two guys. One died, one didn't. So that was another murder charge, an attempt murder charge. So they locked me right back up and was like, we're never going to let you go. Well, so we jumped into the gang activity. But let's go back a little bit to your home environment. Because um, what do you think led you to even become involved in such activity? Well, growing up in a household where it seemed like nothing would ever be right between my mother and my father. It, it kind of like, when you have expectations and you have hopes and you have dreams, but you see that they're crushed right there in your household because there's some type of plague, some type of epidemic that's there, that you feel it. It's like a, it's, it's like a spirit that carries this through curses and curses and curses and those curses just compile on top of each other and before you know it man you kind of like snap some type of way mm -hmm. where you become a rebel mm -hmm. and when you become that rebel you start making choices that are rebellious okay so you know and that's the common natural thing that I always try to get people to understand about children mm -hmm. if you steer them in the wrong direction they become that rebel mm -hmm. and then you wonder why you can't tell them to go sit down at age five because okay. the spirit is getting deeper and deeper into the younger ones and it's trickling down like a generational curse, man. And they, I mean, you got four and five year olds that smack their parents and you wonder why. Right. That's demonic, right. come on now. Well, let me ask you this, as a young man in the prison system, 
How did you cope? I became a writer. I did not know that this was going to be my savior, you know, from my savior. But it was like, he said, I gave you a gift. You're a writer. And I, I was like, I, I mean, I knew this earlier because before I got locked up as a teenager, I had a rap group and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. But he was like, nah, you, you just, this, this other, you a lost disciple. That's what I heard. It was like, it came into my soul and I was like, oh, wow. Started writing poetry, didn't know that I had, you know. They, I remember when they first locked me up in prison. The guy that I shot in the second case that didn't die was at the prison, so we couldn't. At the same prison? Yeah, so we could not come together. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't let us come together. So they stuck me in SEG. Mm. It was 107 degrees in there. They didn't have no sheets in there. They just give you a pair of boxers. You know, it was some ants. I remember it was some ants and some roaches in the corner. Mm. And you can read this in my book that's on Amazon. There were some ants and roaches in the corner. And in order to keep them away from me, I took jelly and put it in the corner and kept them over there. And, they, and that's when I realized, oh my God, God, why are you trying to turn me into a survivor of something? Like, mm -hmm. you know, nah, you get ready to go through something. Mm -hmm. So be ready. Okay, so you, you're in the prison system. Yeah. You start writing. You notice your, the gifts that maybe you didn't know that you had originally. Exactly. Um, were there people within the system that, that reached down to try to lift you up to help? Yeah, there was a young lady by the name of Jocelyn King. She was the diagnostics at Pope View Center. She's actually going to be, she's, there's a scene that she's going to play by Shaw Jackson is playing her mm -hmm. in uh, my biopic that I'm shooting right now about my life story. But, um, you know, you'll probably see that scene. Uh, okay. But the thing about it is, is that when she spoke to me and I said, oh, I got a life sentence. Why, are you, you know, what do you think? How you going to help me? She, I'm never getting out. Uh, why are you so interested in me? And then all of a sudden she says, nah, you're going to get out. Mm -hmm. I just need you to be ready. Okay. So she like threw that first seed of hope in me, man, and it was just like it mustered. And it came to the point where I believe when I started having dreams about me being on TV, me being in newspapers, on radio shows and stuff like that, I started having those dreams in high definition is what I call it. Mm. Not just a little fuzzy dream that you have at the end of the night, everything put together. Just jail. very yeah, crispy yeah, yeah. clear. It was crispy clear. Mm. And it showed me in the entertainment realm. And it said, your story is going to be the real one versus the ones I got out there that's falsifying it. Okay. okay. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I, just, <laughs> I tell you what, I tell you what, because you have such a dynamic story that we want to yeah. share. We need to take a quick break. Okay. And um, during this break, um, we'll show some clips of things um, of you. Okay. Um, sure. Don't go away. Stay with us. Um, Mike Ray Anderson has a, a story to tell, and you're going to learn how he's reaching back to help others. It's just He's just not talking his story. He's actually doing some things to reach back into the community to help lift others out. Stay tuned for more smiles. Hi, my name is Sterling Moody. I'm the owner of Neighbors Market 1005. North 15th Street on the Echo Jazz building across from Emerson Park Metrolink stop. We have fresh barbecue Friday and Saturdays. We have Sunday through Saturday open from 7 to 7. Look forward to seeing you in the store. Fayetteville, North Carolina. My neighborhood was somewhat culturally challenged because it was a lot of frustration and sadness and depression going on because we had a lot of ex-Vietnam vets that were African-American. The houses were being built specifically for these African-American vets that were coming home on a home buying program. There were real estate tycoons in Fayetteville at that time that wanted African Americans over here versus over here on this side of Fayetteville. And then I would say that 75% of the neighborhood was involved with alcoholism, crime, probably within 65% of the households. There was a lot of dysfunctionalism going around in our neighborhood, in our community. My father was an African-American Vietnam vet that had suffered a lot of trauma. So he would go into a 
rage of violence. Sometimes he would attack my mother, sometimes he would attack us. We're sitting here talking with Mike Ray Anderson, and he is a potted soul. Mike, um, thank you for allowing us again to come here to the Red Lion Hotel oh, in no, St. Louis. Oh, no, my pleasure, definitely. And, um, and just so our audience knows, you may hear a little background or what have you, but um, Mike, your story is very, very, very heartwarming. Regarding the film that was done in East St. Louis, Illinois. Yes. I'm from East St. Louis, Illinois, and oh, I'm okay. just wondering, what kind of parallel did you see in your life and what you saw while you were visiting in the East St. Louis area? Well, I have a nonprofit that's called Polished Souls Foundation Incorporated. And I do a lot of gang intervention. Uh, I do a lot of adjudicated youth mentoring. So when we came and shot that film in East St. Louis, and it was like, we was I was like literally living here for like a whole year and six months shooting this film. I was so embedded with the youth. I mean, we lost some of them, man. You know, some of them got killed during the the, 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 the course of us filming it. And you, you know. So, so the ones you were actually with, some of them actually got killed during that yeah, time. Yeah, right. and um, there was a lot of stuff. You know, I was close to all of them, man. And one of them that's in the film just got shot in the butt the other night over by the orange store in East St. Louis. Mm. And I'm just like, yo, what is going on, man? I'm, I'm coming back and now this thing, you know, it's like it hits close to home when you work with these youth. Mm -hmm. But then when you go away and then you hear something slips up, you know, every, sto every story ain't going to be a success story. Right. But we are going to have some success stories. And we need to shed light on those success stories because if we don't, man, we never know the strength of our people mm -hmm. from whence we come. You know what I'm saying? And I always tell people, man, don't. Nah, we kings, we powerful. Ain't, ain't nobody gonna rule us all the time. Right, so so you develop relationships with some of the kids. Yeah, yeah. Um, have you seen other success stories in your, your uh, work, your line of work? I have. I would like to kind of consider my story a success story because of, I mean, I could have came home and, and, did, and did worse, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I could have came home and said, nah, I'm gonna get back in the game or do whatever, but I didn't. I chose to find my gifts and learn how to make them evolve into a mass media thing because mm -hmm. I knew that's the that's the era I came home to. Right. Mass media. So how can I how can I catch this? I started watching Google stuff, YouTube and stuff, and just learning, teaching myself mm -hmm. how to edit, how to grab cameras, how to you know what to shoot. What okay, format so you're, you're self-taught. Self-taught. Okay. Self-taught. So I was just like, I said. This is the way I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna mm -hmm. do it through telling stories. I'm gonna do it through, but having twofold connections and twofold purposes during that project. It's like, yo, I wasn't just there shooting the film. I was able to minister to these young cats, and you know, some of them took it for what it's worth. You know, we got one in college on a baseball scholarship now and everything. So, and one that's out the streets working um, and and realizing it's time for him to be a family man. You know, so I, to me, that's a success story. Mm. Sometimes. I have this dream where I'm up in the clouds, just flying above everything, away from it all, safe. But when I wake up, I feel disappointed because I'm back in this world. East St. Louis was like a vineyard that made some of the finest wine. But at one point, those vineyards burned down. You couldn't produce what you used to produce, and the people didn't come like they used to come. That's where we are now. Yeah, this is St. Louis. St. Louis, very capital of the world. It's a struggle out here. You can be in a gunfight any day. The East St. Louis, it's almost like the town that's been forgotten. It's an environment. We ain't no better than the third world country. Open the door now. You got bogus ass police out here. Get in the car. They taking advantage of their power. Don't you move. One, two, three, slide. I got shot. I don't fear death no more after that. All I ever hear is the clock tick, tick, tick. When you don't have resources, it's a battle. And I'm running, I'm running, I'm running with you now. We don't know what's going to happen this year, but we can do our part. We have to be more proactive. Whatever I got to do to provide, I'm going to do it. You never know if you're going to make it home. I'm out here to make people in East St. Louis feel safe. I wish I could shake you and let you see what you're doing to yourself. Why do you want to be a policeman so bad? I want to protect and serve what the police officers did to me. 
singing while I'm living. All I ever hear is tick, tick, tick. People ask me all the time, aren't you afraid? You better be. I live in East St. Louis. And I noticed yeah. in the film, actually, yeah. one of the one of the kids in the film, I think it was at a funeral. At the end of the funeral, he actually came up and, and hugged you. Yeah, yeah, you probably see that, man. He came up and hugged me, man, out of all the people that was in there. Mm -hmm. And he knew, I don't know, it's like the Lord led him to me and ran to me. And then, like, he was out of breath. And he was just, like, hyperventilating and couldn't breathe. So I had to put my hand on his chest and I, like, prayed right there in the moment. That's all I could think of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I just prayed right there in the moment. Mm -hmm and spoken to him, saying, you got it, you got this, you're all right, you know, just speak life into him. And that's what we got to do with these young cats, man. So we got to speak life into them, right, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. right. When you think about your background and think about how far you've come, and now you're, you're, you're helping others in film yeah. and in writing, um, have you seen others who might want to even follow in your footsteps now and go on and do something, if not in the medium, but in other areas as well, like you said, you saw the one kid who got the bat, the baseball yeah. scholarship. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, actually, the young guy that was uh, you see portraying the little dude that wanted to be a police, he actually uh, wants to be an actor. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> he doesn't want to be a police no more. Okay. He, wants to, he wants to be an actor. So, okay. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. When you visit Big Mamas in East St. Louis, Illinois, located at 5900 St. Clair Avenue, you will need a fork and a bib. Big Mamas is known for their barbecue, cakes, excellent service, and giving back to the community. Call in, eat in, drive through, carry out, order for your office. You can call Big Mamas at 618-398-8950 or visit 5900 St. Clair Avenue in East St. Louis, Illinois. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, pretty much as we shot the film, it just became that twofold purpose. You know, mm -hmm. it was ministry to those guys. And, and you know, there, there's, there's a few here and there that, you know, the stories that I keep up with them, you know, they're doing good. Um, and it's a pleasure to hear that because that success is not shared and more of those stories need to be shared, man, because we have a tendency to sugarcoat things in society and we promote you know the smell of flowers mm. and roses instead of reality you know and <laughs> I, my goal man is to take my vision and create a vision mm -hmm. through vision whether it be television because i don't want to tell lies to your vision i want to tell you the truth that is excellent yeah. um, so the name of this show is smiles Smile TV talk show. And so think of, <laughs> and you have a great smile. <laughs> Thank you. But thinking of um, smiles, one would think that everything is always pleasant. Yeah. But sometimes you go through hard times to get to that pleasant point. Exactly. Being from East St. Louis, I must say this, being from the city, um, just like any other um, area, Detroit, or um, you can even take Cleveland or other areas that have communities like ours, yeah. there are some hard things that happen. Of course, yeah. And, and we don't like to talk about them, but we have to, we do realize that they are there. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and on, on the other hand, that exists as well as some positive things because there's so many great people from the community yeah. Yeah. You know, who, who've come through and who have been polished and who have come through hard times. And like you say, sometimes that the hard environment is what makes those diamonds exactly. come forth. Exactly. Right. And, you know, we have a, a portion of that film where that's even extracted uh, from something that, you know, one of the political officials in the city had said one time. And, you know, she gave a great quote. But, uh, I, you know, that was some part of the film that we made sure we made it a must that that message was reflected. Mm. So there's no way in the world to me, I think that, you know, if, if you miss the message, then something's not right. You're probably not destined to be a part of the solution. You know what I'm saying? And I want each and every one of us to always be a part of the solution, man, and to be held accountable for what these youth are going to. Because I mean, we are the adults that left them a world. That's right. And, and, and a lot of times we want to look and just simply point fingers at the youth and, oh, they're so bad. But wait a minute. 
what as parents are we doing? Yeah. You know, and I even think um, turning a community around or, or bringing a family around, it starts in the womb. It does. You know, it does. The teaching has to start early yeah. the, from the mom. Exactly. I agree because, you know, I mean, the womb man, the woman is the one that had to definitely always conceive, you know, thoughts of wisdom. They became the matriarch. And, you know, by the end of the day, you have, I mean, the cradle of civilization is in the womb, mm -hmm. you know, a Kebulon, the city of womb. It just has to come from there, man. And whatever God has ordained, you know, a gift to come from a struggle or a struggle to birth a gift or whatever, we, we have to accept it. And it, it, it may be a harsh reality, like someone, someone may lose their life or something else may happen, but we always look and we look in the scripture and say, if this happens, then this happens. Right. So it's like an if and then contract. You gotta work diligently to change your community, if that's what you're really about. There was fear, sadness, you know, somebody was killed by my hands, but at the same token, anger that, you know, we tried to walk away, why did you follow us? Why did I make the stupid choice of continuing to sell drugs? There was just so much that was going through my head. When it really hit me was when I stood up in front of that judge for my first Anderson. appearance. And he said, do you understand Anderson. that you are facing a capital punishment? You know, you can get the death penalty for this. For which you could receive the death penalty? How do you and when that judge asked me that question, I knew that he did not think of me as a bad person. But now society was going to deem me as a bad person because of my choices. And right then and there, I just saw my whole life just go down the drain. It would have crushed my mother to see her son get executed. She actually watched her grandmother get executed right before her in that concentration camp. So I did not want her to go through this again with her son. So I made the choice of taking a plea bargain for a life sentence. The first place that I went to was what they called gladiator school because anything goes. And we're, and we're talking about the womb and starting yeah. there, but you know what, I'm gonna even go a step further. Sure. I believe just not even just in East St. Louis, Illinois, but across the country, we have forgotten God. Forgotten God. Even in the African-American community, and, and it's been, and that, and, you know, God is deeply rooted in our community, but we, the adults, are not passing the faith down. We're Man. not encouraging our children in that area, and the hope is missing. I, 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 have, I have a little, black boys, <laughs> seven years old that I'm raising. Uh, the thing about it is, is listen, we, we as men need to accept the fact that we need to cherish the birth hmm. of that young black man. There's this level of faith that I always hope that our common core of our culture and society will come to grips with. And that's to realize that you need to take God out the box before he can even do anything for you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people keep him in the box. They keep him in the institution. They keep him in the religion. Mm -hmm. They keep him under that ceiling mm -hmm. with those four walls around it and don't never let him come out and operate in his vast existence. You know what? That's not the God that I worship. Right. So there's some things we're going to have to set in line right now about this faith thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you ain't ready, you ain't built for it, move out the way. Because wow. God needs soldiers. That's right. God needs soldiers. So, you know, I mean, I, I ain't perfect. I done been through some stuff. I done, you know, I done even probably, you know, given my share of hurt to others, you know. But my thing is, is that when I came back, he told me I was redeemed. He's like, yo, don't hold that against yourself no more. Right. I saw I got a role because he told me to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's just how God talks to me, man. He's like my OG. I always tell people he's my OG, you know what I'm saying? God is my OG, man, and that's just how it is. So what's next for um, Mike Ray Anderson? What's well, in the future? I'm still pushing my book, my autobiography that's on Amazon. It's called A Polished Soul, The Mike Ray Anderson Story. You can find that on Amazon.com. Um, and keep up with me because there's a lot of great things that's going to get ready to happen like in the next few months. So if you follow me at actor mike ray that's a-c-t-o-r-m-i-k-e-r-a-e -E -E on instagram you're gonna see some amazing things happening and it's all because god is doing it of course i always say god out the box is awesome mm -hmm. so just follow me on instagram again that's actor mike ray a-c-t-o-r-m-i-k-e-r-a-e -E -E. and check out an occasional tweet on twitter at mike ray anderson all right <laughs> okay, Mike, I want to thank you for taking time with Smile CB. Um, oh, yes, I loved it. The last words, any 
additional hope um, that you want to offer to the community or to the country? Yeah. Um, my people perish from lack of knowledge. Let's get the knowledge. It's out there. Let's use it. Let's apply it. Let's give these youngsters something to look forward to. Give them a trade. Te teach them a trade. You don't have to teach them a, a four-year degree. Give them a trade. They, they can work with their hands. These youngers are smart now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a program that was out in um, Oakland that I did some work with, with Van Jones and all of them, and mm -hmm. it was, uh, yes, we code. So you know how the youth would, you know, hack iPhones and stuff right, like that. Right. They was using that now. They was using that intelligence mm -hmm. to use to teach these kids that they're really coders. Wow. So they incorporate this whole concept in this education, and that's all I ask is that we all become those type of communities. Mm -hmm. You know, say so teach these kids how to take one thing that we deem is bad and turn it into something that's good because you know the hustle goes both ways. You know what I'm saying? The energy that you put forth into it. It's just what you're determined to do, and I, and, I, and I teach them positive thoughts, you know, as a man thinketh, so in his heart, so is he, and that's what I want these kids to think. One thing I read, and I'm, I'm going to have to um, sign off very shortly, or heard you saying, was that you were given so much mercy, yeah. and that you want to turn around and give that same mercy back to individuals. And you know what, Mike Ray, I do believe you're doing that. We thank God for you. I oh, thank you. I thank you for having me and here. One more question. If you get the chance, will you come back to Smile TV? Sure, sure, I will. Okay, so he said yes. <laughs> so I can smile. Okay. <laughs> thank you, thank no you problem. again. And um, I want to thank you for joining us on Smile TV. Support Mike Ray, follow him on Twitter. Um, I'm going to have my guy put that information back up for you so you can make sure you get it down and follow Mike Ray Anderson because as you see, he is indeed a polished soul. Tune in to Smiles as often as you like. We're on the P. Chapman Network, which is the new national network. We're also on ABC 30 in the St. Louis area. Just look us up and find out where we are in your community. Remember, only what you do for Christ will last, and Jesus is the Lord, the Lord be magnified. The Smiles Television Talk Show wants to showcase your business, organization, church, and activities. If you have an interest in being a guest on Smiles Television Talk Show, or if you have any show ideas, contact Stephanie Anthony Miles at smilestv777 at gmail.com. You may also call 618-741-3770. Tell your friends to subscribe to the Smiles YouTube channel. Let Smiles TV increase your reach. Remember, you look better with smiles. IDEX Media does a lot. From IDEX Photography to IDEX Films. We help create forever memories and forever impressions. Imagination. Image a world. IDEX Media. Awesome sauce. Yeah, baby. Yeah.